Welcome everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how I use this free software, Paint.net, to make my tokens for D&D and other online role-playing games. So first of all, if you don't have Paint.net, you can come over to GetPaint.net. You can find their download link, and then there's a couple versions here. Um, they're actually the same version, just in different spots. I get the second one, this is the free uh, version. And then you have this free download, Paint.net. Uh, 4.2.16 is what I have, so download, install, do all that fun stuff. I've got that running here. So that out of the way. The first thing that I start out with is trying to find a monster or a character that I want to do. And I found one here, this uh, Chul. So we're going to make him as a uh, token. And sometimes if you're doing this for players, sometimes your players will find interesting photos to use. This should work with just about any photo. So I just looked in Google Images and we're just going to right click on the image and do copy image. Uh, depending on your system, you may need to actually download the file, but it works pretty much the same. So we're going to come over here and paste him in. And we are going to expand canvas size here. Uh, for him because we just need a uh, image and we want to do a little bit of pre-processing on him before we actually put him in a token and so what I mean by that is he has this white background and if you notice some of the other images like this one here they have kind of like a textured background right and we need to remove that it's pretty easy since this guy is just uh, has a, a flat white uh, background so if you come over here and click on this magic wand tool it's going to select basically everything that's this white color or you know you can try to click on his claws or something um and for instance what we're trying to do is we're making the background of this image transparent so that it, it works with the token so once i've got that selected i can just hit delete and boom you can see this checkerboard that means that we've got a transparent background You'll have to take a look at your image because there are spots that you'll miss because this only selects kind of on the outside edges. So here uh, it missed this, so we can just grab that and delete it. And right here on this other portion of his legs and delete it. So now he should have a fully transparent background. This works really well, like I said, if there's just kind of a solid color background. When you have uh, colors that are more, um, they're, they're not quite as... Um, hard of a change or they're not all the same like they might have a, a decorative background like for example for his claws you can mess around with the tolerance here and you can see as I change the tolerance it, it'll select more or less of the image so when you're using when you're trying to select this background to delete it if there's actually kind of a variation of colors behind them you may have to kind of tweak this tolerance uh, to, to actually get what you want. The tool is pretty good, um, but if it's got a lot of similar colors, it can get difficult. Uh, so there is our uh, kind of pre-processed image file. Um, and control and scroll wheel lets you do this zoom in and out. It's a super handy and it actually works in a lot of programs. So now the second thing that we need to do is we need to get a token kind of a base token to use. Now, I like to use this 5e tools bestiary website. They have a ton of tokens already, uh, but what I'm mostly interested in is getting this token ring out of here. So same idea, we just right click on the image and we can copy the image. You could save it if you want to, but we're just gonna copy it for now. Come back over to paint.net and we're gonna make a new photo and actually, it, it actually is using the width and height of the image that I have copied. Um, and we're going to paste that in. So here's our token, and it already has the uh, background here uh, that's been removed, which is good. So we don't have to do that. If you found a token that didn't have that on there, you would have to manually remove it again uh, with the magic wand tool. But we're good here. So the first thing we want to do with this is we want to get rid of this underlying image, right? Because we want to put our token inside of there. So I'm going to grab this ellipse select, and this just lets you draw, you know, circles to select with, but they're not perfect circles. So if you hold shift, you get a perfect circle. So I'll zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to get try and click as close as I can to the edge. 
and get all the way on the other side and just kind of tweak it a little bit so until I get it where I'm you know pretty comfortable with what it's selecting and I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit delete now it kind of looks like down here I maybe missed it a little bit on the edge so you could clean that up if you want but it's it's so small you probably aren't gonna notice it I wouldn't worry about it right now I'm gonna come back over to uh, our monster here and what we're gonna do is select all so control A and control C to copy and we're gonna move over to this uh, token ring that we have and we're gonna add a new layer in this layer section and I actually like to put it on the bottom here so we want to be in our second layer and we're going to uh, paste the image in so control V and then we get this dialog box that says, hey, do you want to expand the canvas or do you want to keep the canvas size? Now, this is important. We want to keep the canvas size because uh, if you resize the canvas, it's going to just mess with how big the, well, it's resizing the canvas. It's going to mess with the token size. We want all of our tokens to be the same, so we're going to keep the canvas size. Now, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit here. You can see that the image that we pasted in is a lot bigger than our token, which is fine. So we can kind of, we can just resize him. I'm going to hold shift and resize so that it stays at the same aspect ratio. And we can move him around and resize until we feel like he's um, really fit in this token uh, window really well. So I'm going to bring him up a little bit more because I, I want to try to get both of his arms kind of overlapping um, this this token so they, they kind of stick out for a 3D view so we can need to go just a little bit smaller sometimes it's probably easier if you kind of go a little bit smaller and then so here we'll just kind of place him up in the corner and then we can just kind of resize until he seems like he fits so right there I can kind of start to see that his arm is sticking out on the left side here uh, and I, so I think that's probably a good size for him and you can either hit the escape key to cancel your selection or um, just click on to another tool so now we have uh, our guy in our token, our monster in our token, but he's not overlapping correctly here yet. So to do that, we're actually going to come back down to our layer 2, and we are going to duplicate the layer. And you can just click and grab this layer, and you can move it around. So we're going to move it on top. So what this does is this gives us that cool kind of 3D pop-out effect where he's overlapping the, uh, the outside of the token. The issue that we have now is he is also overlapping this whole token ring and we want his body to be cut off so all we have to do here <clears throat> is just select down here and just kind of delete basically the bottom half of him here um, and we got to delete this leg as well over here so it won't really look like anything's getting deleted because it's also on this other layer um, but if we turn that layer off this is what our top layer looks like now so our top layer is just kind of the top of his head and, and both of his arms sticking out over the top then we have the ring then we have the underlying uh, layer here, and that's kind of his full picture, right? So I'm gonna bring that back here. And so now the next step that we have is we wanna clear out um, his legs here from the bottom, right? Because we, we want everything in the circle to stay here, but we don't want his legs that are outside of that range. So being on this bottom layer, we are going to do this fun little trick where we grab our ellipse and this time you don't have to be as precise you don't have to get right in the middle you can actually do this basically anywhere on the ring um, and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want to delete everything that is not inside of this circle so to do that we selected the circle and we can go up to the invert button here for the selection tool and then we're going to go to our rectangle select again and just from the outside in, we're going to pull this in. And you can see as I'm dragging this over, it's inverting the selection. So now, instead of having only this interior uh, part of the token selected, I'm deleting everything except for that token. So I can go ahead and hit the delete key. And boom, that's gone. And you can see how quick this is. It's really not, uh, not a lot of work to get this put together here. So... That's our kind of base of our token. Now you could, um, let's say we add another layer behind him 
and you could drop you know your paint bucket you could put like a, a black background on there or like a, a dark red or something whatever you want to do there you can kind of mess around with that i want to go more fancy and we're going to grab some swamp background since that's kind of where these types of monsters are found so magic the gathering or any other card game art is a great option so same thing copy image and we're going to jump back over to our token on this bottom uh, token layer we're going to drop it in we'll keep the canvas size again again we have to do a little bit of resizing if you want i mean that doesn't actually look too bad but i want to try and get a little bit more in there so let's just resize and see what that gives us i think that looks pretty decent you can kind of move it around maybe you don't like where those birds are in the in the image you want to go more to this side doesn't really matter as long as the entire back of this, uh, the inside of the circle of this token are filled in, right? So there we go. We've got our background on there and we're gonna come back and do that same trick, right? Where we're going to delete everything on the outside. And since this image was already selected, I can just come back and do my ellipse select, get the token and hit the delete key and boom. We've got a token. We've got kind of a double layer thing going on with the guy, with the monster, so his arms stick out outside of the token. Uh, this specifically works really well with tokens where the characters have something that sticks up into one of the corners because you'll notice that the token edge gets really close to um, the top of the image here. So if you have anything going like straight up or straight off to the sides, it's not going to show up as well. But anything where you kind of hit the corners, uh, is, this, this should work pretty well. So that is um, your basic steps to making a token, but we're going to take it one step farther. And this is kind of an experimental step that you can play around with. So we're going to take one of these layers, we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to go into the adjustments, brightness and contrast, and bring brightness all the way down, right? So we're basically making a shadow layer. Let's actually move it to the bottom. So, so there's this regular layer, there's a shadow layer. So this is to give it another little bit of a 3D effect. Then you can go to effects and blurs, Gaussian blur. And then you can, you can play around with this, right? So this blurs that background. Uh, so even just a little bit kind of gives him just a little bit of a shadow that helps him stand out over the top of the token and over the top of the, the background behind him. The only issue that you get when you're doing tokens like this is that now you'll see that the blur, you can see the difference between you know where we had deleted the top one and the bottom one. So you may have to come back in and do a little bit of editing here to kind of try to clean some of that up. And then you would want to then do another blur on uh, this other layer here to kind of finish out the blur so again we went brightness contrast this kept our settings so we're making a completely dark layer and then we're going to uh, repeat this Gaussian blur again and there you go it's um and actually that looks pretty decent um so then you get this little blur on the image which helps him stand out a little bit from the uh, background now the other thing you can do let's say you didn't want to do that there's a there's also an easy way another easy way you can do this um, let's say you want to merge all these layers down so this just turns them into one uh, image you can duplicate this whole image and you can do the same process you can do brightness contrast you can make a shadow layer um, and if you notice the brightness it's not completely just black it, it does have some of the color still, um, which is good because it has this cool effect of when you repeat the blur, and let me actually undo that. I'm gonna do a slightly stronger blur here. So this is only eight. You can, you know, you can crank this up as much as you want, but like, let's do like 25, okay? So here's our blur. You get this kind of neat, the whole token is now blurred. So it's like there's, uh, the token would, would not, uh, like the character doesn't stand out from his background, but he would stand out from the tabletop because he's got this little shadow on him. And now you'll notice here that color thing is interesting because now you get like this darkened like yellow gold and kind of orangey um, shading just because this bottom layer isn't actually 100% black. It does kind of mimic the colors on 
uh, the actual token, which is just kind of neat. So you can see like kind of some greenish blurs over here and, you know, darker browns over here and then like the light yellows and stuff. So just a, another interesting thing that you can do if you want to mess around with blurring. Um, before you do this merge, I know this isn't too difficult, but if I just do um, edit undo a couple of times and get my layers back. So if you get your layers back, I would probably, if you're gonna make a lot of tokens, I would save this as uh, their default. So a paint.net is a basically a paint.net project file, which means it's gonna have all these layers separated you're not gonna be able to upload a paint.net file to like Roll20, for example, um, just because it's not a supported file type. It doesn't look like an image, it's a project file. Uh, what you end up doing, uh, so like I said, if you're going to make a lot of these, I would save uh, basically a generic template file like this as a paint.net. That way you can come in and you've already got your uh, token background is already chopped out. And then you can just go in and just replace these other layers as you need to and then save them for whatever monsters you do. Uh, to actually save it as a usable image, you want to save it as a PNG because PNGs have the transparent background. JPEGs and a lot of the other ones don't have transparency in the background. Uh, so let's just name him Tool Token. Save him to the desktop. It's gonna give us some more options. We can just click OK and you can flatten it. So it's gonna do that same thing that I did earlier where I merged everything down, uh, but this just flattens it into one single PNG file that can be used uh, anywhere. Now let me grab him. He's on this other side here. So there's the token. You can't see that very well. So let's just go ahead and open the uh, file here. So this is what uh, he more or less will look like once you drop him on a tabletop, right? So you've got this clear background um, and he sticks out. and Honestly, it takes like five minutes when you get used to it and you can take just about any reference photo, any background you want, and you can just drop them together and make a token. So.